Hey everyone, Michelle here from Lumen Massage and welcome to our channel. Uh, today we have Leah and she's going to be joining us from Kerrville, Texas. And Leah is the founder of Essential Escape Massage in Kerrville. And she's going to share with us her story, which is fascinating. And there's little pockets that I'm just like, they're so <laughs> juicy. Um, so Leah, thank you for making the time to come on board and just um, share with us your journey as a massage therapist and your career and where you're at now. And hopefully maybe some motivational and inspiring nuggets to um, <laughs> motivate the current generation of massage therapists and maybe even future uh, therapists. So. Um, I'm going to kind of go through a marvelous timeline and then we'll delve deeper into Leah's story and uh, yeah, we can kind of unpack it together. So Leah says I, I do great notes, so I'm just going <laughs> to. <laughs> you do, you do. I had notes on you too, so. <laughs> <laughs> we have notes on it. We like have a t-shirt. I have notes on you. <laughs> Okay, so um, Leah's career started in San Antonio, Texas for so all those Texan massage therapists mm -hmm. out there. Um, she's been a massage therapist for 21 years, so kudos to you. Thank you, um, thank so you. Leah actually attended massage school after the September 11th terrorist attacks on the US um, in 2001, which was probably crazy. It was uh, a weird time. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, it, it definitely was. Um, and then she received her uh, in 20, 2002. I keep wanting to say like 2022. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> 2002. Um, you got your massage license um, and you you felt like when you went to massage school, it, it really didn't go into like the marketing aspect of owning your business, but there's like a real big push on like own your business, own your business, own your business. Yeah. So talk to me a little bit about that and like, yeah, like what was your experience like in terms of like when you got out into the real world and you're like, okay, what does this even look like? Well, I, the instructor that I had, it was his very first class that he ever taught. And so he was slightly pretentious and arrogant, but he would always tell us, don't you dare go work for those Walmart massage chains. Those are the Walmart of massage. You don't ever want to do that. But wow. they didn't really tell you what it took to get people... <laughs> as clients right out of massage school it was really difficult they didn't quite tell us that so I bumbled around for a little bit I was waiting tables to just pay the bills and kind of trying to figure out how to find clients but the whole idea of walking up and introducing yourself and being like hey I want to touch your body in your house because <laughs> I have an office was just really weird and so for the longest time it was mostly just friends and family or people that I worked with here and there it wasn't really a serious deal and I started to even feel like this isn't something that I could do this is something that other people might be able to do but this is just going to be a hobby on my own and it was just so frustrating because I really wanted more I wanted it to be my career I yeah. did the calculations when they told us how much we could get paid in school it's just they didn't tell us how hard it actually was going to be to find those 20 clients a week or whatever it is that we needed for our budget. So it, it was it was difficult in the beginning. So I just kept waiting tables and kept bumbling through. And then finally, I went to go work for one of the Walmarts of massage therapy because I decided to fold back into my education and finish my bachelor's degree in psychology and then subsequently my master's degree in counseling. So I used the opportunities at um, franchises like Massage Heights and Massage Envy that's located down here in Central Texas to just kind of hone my skills and grow my practice and get really comfortable with the style of massage that I felt good about, watching other therapists, receiving massage, all while I was finishing my education at UTSA in San Antonio. Yeah, that's awesome. And, and I think a lot of massage therapists, even today, are really frustrating, frustrated with the lack of marketing instruction because yeah you you go into school oftentimes you know wanting to start a new career and some massage therapists don't want to start their own business like they just want to be healers and they just want to help people and you know there's no right or wrong it's it's definitely something that the massage therapy industry um promotes a lot is self-employment Mm -hmm. um, but if that's not, if that's not something that you're interested in, 
you definitely shouldn't feel the pressure. So um, you went into working at a franchise and I think that's super important because again, there's some people that they just want to go in, they want to hone in on their craft, mm -hmm. they want to learn as much as possible. Um, and that can happen anywhere. It can happen at a chiropractor's office. It can happen at a franchise. You know, some places do kind of have a stigma, but um, then you became a manager, right? Yes. Uh -huh. You became a manager at a massage franchise. Um, talk to us a little bit about what led to that decision and what you learned as a yeah. therapist working in that, in that work culture. At the time, I was really surprised that they asked me because I was the top therapist at that particular massage MB. I was the most requested massage therapist and the owner would get massages from me here and there and we'd kind of talk and I had finished my education. So he knew that I kind of had the stick to itiveness, you know, to uh, figure stuff out. And so he asked me and I was really surprised, but this tied in with my personal goals at that time. I wanted to get pregnant. I was 34, 35 at that time. And so the time clock was ticking for me personally. And so I wondered to myself, how can I have what they would term a high risk pregnancy as I'm getting pregnant later on in life yeah. and continue to try to do the physicality of massage. So when he offered me that position, I thought to myself, this could be really good because I knew at the time that after I had my child, I was not going to go back to work for a chain. And so I thought, okay, let me get the behind the scenes here and figure out what it's like to manage a facility and understand a little bit more about the numbers, the marketing, um, the just general systems that's that you need to run a place in a facility like that. And then and lo and behold, I became pregnant with my daughter in 2011. And then I, I had my child in 2012. So <laughs> yeah, that's, that is really smart. And, and management is something that you know, a massage therapist after some time, but you said something really unique. You said stick to itiveness. I love the yeah. word you used. <laughs> well, you know, I think a lot of people, um, this, this always weirds me out, but somebody has told me before that it's intimidating that you have so much education. You're so smart. And I've never really thought of smart as like a fixed construct. I don't think that because I have papers on the wall that that makes me smarter than anybody else. It really doesn't. It means that I followed instructions. They, 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 give you a, they give you a list of classes that you're supposed to take to make said degree. You show up, you know, you read the syllabus, you do the things that they tell you to. And then at the end of the process, you get a piece of paper that said that you did a thing. So I think what degrees show more than anything is your ability to be able to stick to a program and follow through with something. I don't think it necessarily makes you smarter than the average bear. <laughs> I really don't. And that is, um, that's really great that you pointed that out because many massage therapists that enter school really struggle with um, either learning capabilities and it has nothing to do with intelligence. It just has to do, um, I don't know, it, it could have to do with brain chemistry. It could have to do with uh, just something that that is really, really challenging for someone. So. There has always been, and I, I think we're moving away from that as more and more people are exploring alternative education and taking courses and being more of a self-starter when it comes to growing their skills. But there's no shame in um, knowing that every educational tract is different. So I'm so grateful. In fact, I completely that. failed out school at my first time. I completely failed out of school. I was, you know, 18, 19 years old. I tried to go to San Antonio and go to the University of Texas at San Antonio, which had more people at it than there were in my entire hometown. And it was entirely too overwhelming for me. And I completely failed out of school. So it took me a second try of going back to a county college, which fit my spirit a little bit better and wasn't as overwhelming for me to kind of get down, get college down and kind of understand what it was like. So it, it definitely wasn't even a straight road. It, it was entirely bumpy. I, I got kicked out of school my, my first time. So I had to go back and rework some of that and then hit it again, you know? And that that's kind of been the theme of my life a little bit. You know, you, you, you jump in, you figure some things out, you don't figure some things out, you wildly mess up and then you give it another go. <laughs> okay. That's great. So there you are as a manager, as, you know, kind of managing the massage franchise. What did, what did you learn? What did you learn from that experience 
that you would tell um, either new massage therapists or, or maybe even massage therapists that gave up on their career during COVID, that was a really scary time. Um, what were like some key lessons that you walked away from that experience? Well, I picked up a lot about massage therapists. Massage therapists are really unique individuals that are kind of uh, mostly introverted in nature. Lots of times they are solo people. They like to work by themselves. Um, they're kind of free spirited in nature. So I learned a little bit more about kind of uh, lassoing them in just a little bit and figuring out what they valued so I could make sure that I was offering things that they valued and I was seeing them as healers not necessarily as the owners of that particular franchise like to see them as cars that needed to go a certain miles but if they can do six they need to do six every day and I was like no that's that's not how this works you know <laughs> that's yeah. not how this works a lot so I, I saw a lot about what not to do when I was working for the franchises I was at but it really was great what I really loved was working with a team with other massage therapists and other healers because we really were we'd operated on the same wavelength it was just about making sure that they stayed organized and motivated and that I was speaking to what they valued actually um, so connecting with them and talking to them and seeing how things were going with their sessions and their clients I mean that was really important. So I did learn a whole lot about the management side and the client management side, um, the systems management, all of that kind of stuff. I learned a whole lot working for massage clinics yeah. doing that. Yeah, that's awesome. All right. So I want to talk about, so you got pregnant with your beautiful <laughs> daughter and um, you, you finished your bachelor's in psychology and your master's in counseling. Um, and that is incredible, even though it was <laughs> your road. That is really yeah. incredible. Um, but let's talk about, I think my favorite part is this, I titled it the aggressive marketing approach. So there's yeah. a moment in time where when we were chatting before that you were telling me that you were sitting in your car, you painted this picture and I was like <laughs> right there with you in the passenger <laughs> seat. And um, I wanted to make a mention of this because I feel as though our industry, because it, it doesn't have a corporate ladder to climb up or it just, it feels very widespread. You know, um, many massage therapists kind of find themselves at this point. And uh, so you were in your car and you had something in mind and we will title it aggressive marketing. So walk <laughs> us through what that moment was like for you. Who was in the back seat? What was your driving force? Talk to us about that. I, I ended up leaving the management job I was at because the owners were unbelievably stressful, um, stressing me out every single day and my blood pressure was high. So I left at about six months pregnant. And then I knew that I was going to just work for myself afterwards, but I didn't really know exactly how, because I was kind of distracted with growing a little human. And so I had her in <laughs> July. <laughs> I had her in 2012. I just had a lot of hope that it would work out, but no real plan. So I had her in 2012 and I got released from my doctor after six weeks. I had a C-section with an 11 pound baby. And so it was like, how am I going to do this? Um, so I figured it out though. I just told myself I got 90 days to make X number of dollars, what my budget was at the time. And for me at the time, it was $2,000. I gave myself 90 days to make $2,000 in a one month period of time. And if I could do that, that meant that I did not have to put my daughter in a $750 a month daycare and go back to work being gone from her most of the time. So I, as soon as I was released to work, I would jump in the car with my kiddo. It was the middle of summer. It was like late August because I had her in July. And I would pop her in the back seat and I would drive around until she fell asleep. And then I would pull into the nearest parking lot and start in the A's on my cell phone and text literally every single person I knew. I would copy and paste the message. Sometimes I would send a picture of my child sleeping in the back seat because I was absolutely shameless. A lot of my clients knew that I had had a baby and had been keeping track with me. So there was some people luckily that had been waiting for me to reach out to them and other people all pretty much had to be strong armed into letting me come over to their house and give them a massage because I had to get groceries and I needed to get formula and I needed to pay the rent. So it was imperative. There was no shame. I sent pictures of my kids sleeping, uh, you name it. And, and I would just start in the A's and text every single person I knew until I felt up, filled up my week as much as I could. Yeah. So how long 
how long did that take you? I mean, did you do it in an hour? I mean, how long did it take you to fill up your week? <laughs> it was every single day I would do this because sometimes I would get one, you know, and the thing is I had to wait for my daughter's dad to get home. So I could only really work in the evening from about, you know, 4.30 or five o'clock to nine o'clock. And so it was about trying to fill up every evening that I could. And I literally would try to go every single evening. I didn't give myself a break. I didn't do anything. If I had an opportunity to make money, I went out and did it <laughs> constantly. But after about two years, I started kind of wearing down. I remember one time I was stuck on the couch, literally. I could not rise from the couch because of the way I was carrying my table into homes and sometimes going up to two to three homes a day if I could, because I didn't have any boundaries around it. If somebody wanted a one hour massage, 45 minutes up 281, I went and charged the most ridiculously low prices to do it because I didn't really know. I never even researched how much a, a home massage was or alcohol massage. Yeah. I just literally thought this would be good. Let's go. <laughs> so I, I, hear, I hear a couple of different things, a few things actually. So I hear in overcoming your fear and overcoming any shame, right? And just doing what you needed to do. So there is definitely ambition. And I feel that ambition is not a bad word. It's not a negative word. But for a lot of massage therapists who are also very, as you said, introverted and creative types, um, you know, it can be easy to kind of scale back and say, well, what, would, what will this person think of me? And I don't want to come across as pushy or harsh. But you didn't care at a certain point. You were just like, yes, <laughs> this is what's happening. And then um, I think there's a lot of value to that because uh, I have discovered and I've learned this over a period of time that you do have to sell and selling. Yes. You have to mm -hmm. mean that you're a bad person or a greedy person. There is a way to, to sell with integrity Mm -hmm. and, um, and, and being honest, which is part of integrity. The other thing that I heard you say is that you didn't do your research, right? You didn't do your research in terms of what other massage therapists were charging at the time. So market research yeah. <laughs> is crucial, right? So if you're Absolutely. listening to this, and you're like, I mean, to hit the point home, I was making $15 an hour at Massage MB plus tips. Mm -hmm. Plus they gave you a whopping extra $2 an hour. <laughs> uh, I, I, I priced my, um, my alcohol massages, home massages at $45 an hour, 60 for a 90 minute, $80 for two hours. Well, of course, people are going to jump on that. <laughs> but to myself, I was like, oh, this is three times more than I'm making there. This is great. But I didn't understand the wear and tear on my body. I didn't understand that I was going to have to pay taxes out of that money. I didn't understand that there's a cap to how many different places you can go in one day before your yeah, body is you okay, go. okay, I'm done. You know, you can't just work me until I'm about to fall over. So that was a big lesson, too, with the alcohols. It took about two years of just constant, nonstop. You know, and then finally I got a tiny little office, tiny, tiny little office in 2014, about two years after my daughter was born. Yeah. And what was that experience like for you <laughs> going into that office space and being like, I no longer have to go to people's homes because I was scared to death. I, I had been avoiding overhead for the longest time because I think in massage school too, that was one of the things that they just kind of, it was a buzzword and they just scared us about it. But I was just trying to avoid overhead. But what I was doing in avoiding overhead is that I was beating myself up and I was overextending my body to the point where how am I going to continue to do this at all if I max myself out every single day, seven days a week. So I got the tiniest little office. We talked about this before. You had one too. It was literally just Tiny. enough space to put a yeah, <laughs> massage table a desk with a laptop and a chair. And there was a hook on the corner behind the door. But other than that, there was not much to it. It was in a business office business building that was not too far from my house. So that worked out really well. It was located off a major highway in San Antonio. So I reasoned that the rent was $500 a month. So I told myself if I can find 125 more dollars a week, then that's the rent. Yeah. So surely I can figure that out and I can continue to do the out calls and try to tell people that there's an option. So what I 
I did is I, I bought letterhead, which was crazy expensive. I remember at the time I bought letterhead and I decided to go up on my prices and announce to people that I was opening an office. And if they wanted to continue to get the, the lower rates, they would need to come to my office, but that my out call rates had raised up. And I remember being sick to my stomach the night before it was time to send out this because it felt like I was sending out like 45 potential breakup letters. And wow. I had done it, you know, for two years, but I thought that could possibly be my, my breaking point. People were going to be so offended that I was going up on my prices and take it so personally. And that did not happen at all. There was literally just one person that said anything to me about it. And that was based on his perception and mis misperception of what I was doing. He thought I was breaking up with them by going up so drastically on my prices because that's what he had been told by a mentor you want to keep a client, just go up a little bit. If you want to break up with a client, then you raise your prices by a lot. So he was just tied up with the fact that he thought that I was dumping them. Mm -hmm. uh, so, so once I, I assured him that I wasn't dumping them and they could still pay the lower prices and come to my office, that it kind of worked out. I didn't lose one person. In fact, the first month of my business, which was June of 2014, I did more business than I could have possibly imagined. I, I doubled, I almost got close to tripling the amount that I felt like I wanted to make by being in there. So it was incredible. And I wasn't completely exhausted and I didn't have to walk into everybody's homes and deal with all of the sketchy energy that can be there sometimes. <laughs> so it was good. The cat climbing onto the massage. Yeah. <laughs> the was yes. The dog person the or back. getting chased by dogs or having yeah. the elevator break down yes. and having to carry that heavy massage. <laughs> mm -hmm. yeah. I'm totally projecting. I'm totally projecting. Yeah. No, there mm -hmm. are massage therapists that will be watching this that choose to do mobile and we respect mm -hmm. you. Um, Absolutely. And it started my business. Mobile yeah. massage was where yeah. it's at. So I just couldn't sustain it. Yeah. Exactly. So if that's where you're at, kudos to you. We totally support you. Um, it is physically demanding and massage, we recognize as being over two decades of experience, we want you to take these nuggets of wisdom and just say, prepare, you know, overhead is not scary there. That's the nugget no. of wisdom that mm -hmm. they don't teach you. <laughs> Maybe even today, <laughs> overhead is not scary. And we when can you make it work. Ahead, yeah, mm -hmm. make it work. All right. So you got your office space. Um, you got a loan from friends and family. Um, was that before the office space afterwards? Tiny loan. I got five hundred dollars from my dad and five hundred dollars from my very best friend, and yeah. and one of those five hundreds bought my very first hydraulic table, which was a game game changer as well. So the tiny office where I wasn't running all over San Antonio, I did do some outfalls a little bit, but mm -hmm. so I just got tiny little loans to furnish this little office and get a hydro a used <laughs> I'll note hydraulic table, um, and that really helped a lot. And then I continued to do outfalls on the side and just continued to grow my business. So I was in that office from 2014 to um, like the middle of 2017. But in that process in January of 2017, we relocated our home an hour north to Kerrville, which was my hometown. And my dad was having health issues. And so I needed, I'm the only child um, and it's just my dad. And so I needed to move home. And so we moved home to Kerrville, Texas, which is about an hour west, northwest of San Antonio. And I was, I was petrified because I had really grinded out every second, every year, every day for 15 years in San Antonio growing my practice. And now I was leaving it. So I kept my office for just a little bit, but the, the challenge of driving back and forth an hour every day just to go do out calls or go do a handful of massages at my office didn't quite work out. So I ended up ultimately leaving that small office and just having a tiny office here in Kerrville to start off with. And it worked out really well. My daughter started kindergarten at that time. So it freed up my days a lot, which helped. And then I just kind of started all over, but I knew that I couldn't, it couldn't take me 15 years again to get my business up and running. So here we go again, round two of the super aggressive marketing approach, <laughs> but this time in a town that was probably 20 times smaller than San Antonio, Texas was. Mm -hmm. Can you talk to us? Uh, do you mind sharing maybe like one or three um, game changing marketing strategies that you use, even if you had to invest money 
um, what did you what did you see? Like, where did you see it kind of like turn around from that point that you're like, this cannot take 15 years and this is what I'm willing to do? Like what well, produced results for you? This was 2017. So the first thing that I did was I contacted a local magazine called Kerr County People. And I literally emailed the lady from lunch and said, what is this all about? How do I get to where I can advertise? She had little quarter page squares. And I just thought maybe I need to advertise. And, and I, since I'd never done any kind of advertising like that or formal advertising, I had no clue what that would even cost. And so I contacted her and luckily she was willing to meet with me and work with me. And she gave me a deal even. So she, she charged me half of what it was. It was like $125 every other month. And then she wanted me to give her a massage once a month. And if I signed this little contract with her where I did that for a year, so I committed to $125 every other month for a year and giving her a massage once a month that I would get a feature at a certain point and I could pick when I wanted to do a feature. So I got like a two to three page spread um, that came out um, in November, November 1st. And that was a crucial time for the Texas Hill Country and for anybody at all, because here's this thing about massage therapy. I'd had the little ads running for a little bit. And then there was this big ad about myself and I was a, a small town girl and I came back to work here. And so there was a feature in this magazine and like literally every restaurant in town, but that wasn't even the biggest thing that I did. One day, all of my appointments canceled and the hair salon that was downstairs from me, they said that they were moving and they had me linked in their website. So I was getting some business from them as well. So when I realized that they were leaving and I wasn't going to have that connection to the hair salon, I knew I needed to do something else. So all of my appointments canceled and rather than going home and just crawling under the covers, I decided to figure Google out. And so I figured out how to get myself on Google My Business. And then at that time it was called Google AdWords as well. And figure out how to put myself on Google AdWords um, so that when people just typed in massage and Kerrville, I was one of the first things that popped up. Once I got myself on Google, the phone started ringing nonstop. The calls still just went to my cell phone. I had people trying to push in my door because I just had this tiny little place because it appeared that I was like a big brick and mortar type building, not just a little office. So, and then I got an answering service to answer my calls while I was taking massages. And so that happened in a real quick succession. We're talking about November, December from the year before I did the feature in the magazine by January, I'm getting a lot of calls and I figure out Google. And then I get the answering service by February. Then I had a colleague come and talk to me in March and say, hey, do you have enough work for me too? And, and that was a lot to think about at that time. And, but that led me to my current office where I'm at right now that has bigger, a much bigger space. And so there's more treatment rooms in there. Mm -hmm. So here we are. And now it's been four years, June 1st. <laughs> yeah. Um, how do you, you know, relocating is is huge. Many, many mm -hmm. massage therapists um, and any service oriented business, you work a community, right? You yes. invest time and energy into a community. And many massage therapists, as you mentioned, are very free spirited. So they long to travel. They long to be flexible. And sometimes with people that feel stuck, or they're not able to do that. How were you able to mentally jump that hurdle and say, you know, I'm, I'm going to do this. I'm going to relocate and say goodbye <laughs> to, you know, 15 years worth. How did you overcome that emotionally and mentally? I kept the toe in it at first. I couldn't completely let go because these were people that I would sit down and have spaghetti dinner with every other Monday night before we did the massage. And so I initially went back and forth. Like I kept the little office in San Antonio for just a little bit. So I kind of slowly transitioned. I got a tiny little office just two days a week here and started to try to grow my practice here. But I still had my foot in San Antonio a little bit and it took a little while to completely leave that alone. And what's interesting is when I was able to finally just focus on one place at one time and my child went to school, so she wasn't with me all day, <laughs> then I was really able to start, you know, kind of blossoming in my business and doing what was necessary. So there was a lot of brainstorming. There was a lot more letters 
that were written out, I decided to call um, every chiropractor in town and see if they were associated with a massage therapist. And if they weren't, get permission to send them a letter with some rack cards. I had to put all of that on my credit card because I had just moved and I didn't have the money <laughs> to yeah. do that. And so it was a daunting expense. And then I also um, contacted every ob gen in town because I thought, who needs massage? You know, with people who are pregnant, you know, women, that's who I'm focusing on. And then I also talked, you know, was talking to the chiropractors. And then I also found every CrossFit gym in Kerrville and went and introduced myself to them and took them freebies and, you know, a little $10 Starbucks card or an iTunes card and talked to them for a little bit. I did chair massage gigs. I did cupping massage, you know, demos. I did everything, <laughs> everything that I could possibly do. I, I hit it hard. It, it was, it was a different version of driving around with my kid in the car because she was finally in school, but I, I hit it hard. I yeah. just, I had a bunch of different bubbles and I hit every single one of them, but I feel like the biggest thing was Google because everybody's walking around with the phone in their pocket. It was so difficult for me because I'm not really techie. Um, so trying to figure out how to get onto Google, but the biggest thing for my business has been that I believe, and then just garnering uh, really good reviews. So not only when somebody types the word massage here in Kerrville, you know, do, am I one of the first that pop up, but it's like 700 five-star reviews. Yeah. So you can't, you can't really help, but come to, you know, our office here in Kerrville. So it's, it's I, good. I was recently shopping for a gym because now that we're kind of coming out of COVID, I'm eager to get back to a gym. I enjoy going to a space. I don't enjoy mm -hmm. working out at home. And um, the gym where I was going to, you know, just talking with the guy, there's like budget-friendly gyms, but when he kind of laid out what was different about their establishment, um, I, I was happy to join. So, and I am happy to be back, but yeah, it's, it's something that he said, this is a place for, for people that are serious about getting back into a healthy state. Uh, and you may not find that if you go to a budget friendly gym, there's a lot. And he gave me some examples. He wasn't bashing the competition. He was right. just very clear and there wasn't an, a note of desperation. He was just communicating what the differences mm -hmm. were. So that was a big transition point. So when people do read those reviews and they say, oh, okay, I, I understand the difference. Hopefully they read them, but they mm -hmm. do. Um, now you are managing a staff. So you mm -hmm. have an office manager, um, you have three massage therapists, and then you have an esthetician. Yes. Talk Talk to massage therapists about what it's like to work for another therapist. People have this concept of, oh, if you work for small businesses, you're going to get screwed over. You're not going to get paid on time. Um, you know, there's, it, they're not going to be as organized. Have you, you know, talk to us about that. What are your thoughts on that? I think my staff really appreciates it. I still massage three days a week as well. So I'm still getting my elbows all lotioned up. So I'm able to kind of stay on the same wavelength as they are in regards to, I know how hard this is. I know what you need to do, but they're really appreciative. Um, the fr I had one team prior to COVID and that kind of all fell apart and I was solo for a long time. And I didn't know if I wanted to go back to doing it again, but in the beginning of 2021, I really was like, okay, I think that I do, but I got very intentional. I didn't just throw it together because my friend came to talk to me mm -hmm. about passively working for me and I didn't do any research. I really pulled way back during COVID and worked by myself for a little while and thought to myself, I can be completely fine on my own and I can sustain my office on my own. So if I'm going to go forward with this, I want to be very specific about what it is that I want and massage therapists. And I literally came into the room that massage therapists would be working in. And I sat here and I prayed and I meditated and I thought about the conversations that I would have with her and what it would be like. And who is it that I want? Do I want another veteran massage therapist or do I want a brand new one? And I ended up going with a brand new massage therapist because I wanted somebody that I could, I didn't want anybody who could say, oh, well, that's not how we do it at the place that I'm at. Um, I didn't, I wanted somebody to see me as an expert in the field because at that point, I had earned it I felt even though I struggled with some imposter syndrome <laughs> and I still do day to day on that but I had to recognize that I know what it is that I'm doing I've grown this practice I've grown a reputation and so I want to have somebody that I can talk to about what my system is and you do my system and then I'm going to help you with skills and I'm going to help you with client management and so it's been really good the three therapists that I got working for me now are fantastic 
Um, I got one that just literally hit her one year mark and she's fantastic. She's never missed one day of work. She's always willing to do whatever it takes. And then I have two more, one that has about eight years of experience. And then another one that has about, I think five to six years of experience. And then I just brought on an esthetician at the beginning of the year. And that was very daunting because I know nothing about esthetician work and, <laughs> and facials before I'm, I'm purchasing equipment and realizing that I'd never once even had a facial in my life because I was raised by a man. You know, I, I wash my face twice a day and that's about it. And so I started to go get facials and figure out what it is, you know, and it was literally that fast. I've gotten like three facials and I've thought to myself, well, these are the things that they did that I really liked. And these are the things that they did that I really didn't. You know, you have to put yourself in the position of being the consumer to kind of fine tune the things that are important to you. But yeah. I meet with all of my employees every 90 days. Uh, we have sit down and I take them to lunch and we have meetings, formal meetings where we check in and I see what they're doing. We talk about how many hours of massage they're doing, what continuing education they're wanting to take what they need from me. And so that's been helpful as well. And, and also with my first team, I didn't even have an employee manual or any kind of rules or anything. We were just winging it as we went. And through the years, I have an employee manual and actual job descriptions. And so it's very clear what it is that I'm expecting of my team when they come on. And it's been really wonderful. Good. So what would you say to a massage therapist that is scared of being employed anywhere? Uh, because there's this really strong force to be self-employed and like you experienced. And by the way, I will eradicate that imposter syndrome because you have 21 years. And like <laughs> I tell myself, um, with 25 years of experience, I have paid my dues. And yes. paid my dues um, is a term that uh, the current generation is not familiar with. But <laughs> no. But basically, it's, you know, paid my dues in the sense that you've been in the thick of it and you understand and there's a great advantage to having been in the thick of it and having made many mistakes and, and things like that. So what would you say to massage therapists that are like, you know, I just, I don't want to be employed. I don't want to be tied down. There's a lot of fear right now about committing to a place um, and, and even signing a contract or an agreement, um, whether it's as an independent contractor or as an employee, um, what would you speak to um, that therapist that's listening? I think that there's a lot of value in working for people like even myself that I worked at Massage MV and Massage Heights. And at, at the time, that's, that's what served me as, as well. And we grow and we change and we evolve over the years. And so at some point, it's a time to just focus on your skill and your spirit and figuring out what it is that really speaks to you as far as techniques. What are the things that you might turn into your niche? you know, places of employment are places that you can go and figure that kind of stuff out because you're going to get delivered a lot of different body types. You're going to get a lot delivered a lot of different types of personalities, even and types of issues with the body and having a place where an employer is going to cover your lotion, your cream, your marketing and all of that kind of stuff. And it's a place where you can just get in and hone your skills. There's a lot of value in that because that is the foundation of your job as a massage therapist is kind of figuring out what your thing is. Do you like sports massage? Do you like prenatal massage? Do you prefer Swedish? Are you more into clinical? Do you like the spa? So going to work for places is exactly the groundwork that you need to be laying to kind of figure out what kind of therapist am I and what feels right to my body and what feels right to my spirit. So I think that working for a place has a lot of value in it because you get to kind of figure out who you are as a therapist and what you value. Yeah. And then slowly you can kind of watch. And if that's something that you want to do, great. If that's not something you want to take on because trust me, it looks easier from the outside <laughs> than it is on the inside. There is a whole lot of extra work, you know, and laundry and bookkeeping, and there's a whole lot of extra work that's done on the other side of it. Yeah. So yeah, it's good to kind of watch and observe for a little bit and just hone your skills. I think yeah. like right now I'm in a season where, um, in my business, I'm going to be stepping away from the treatment room. Mm -hmm. And that is intentional. And I tell people, especially the clients, um, I'm going to try it out. Let's see how it goes. And, you know, they ask me, well, what are you going to do with your time? And I just want to take like one of those, like, you know, how in the cartoons, they would like have like this parchment scroll <laughs> that would like roll on the ground. 
I tell them in a loving and respectful way, I'll say, and I'll just name, I'll start naming all of the different hats that you have to wear when you are running a business. Um, and a lot of people glorify it and they romanticize it. There are a lot of benefits to it, but it definitely, um, my hope is that it'll free me up to take care of, of all those departments in an effective way and pour into the massage therapists that are with me now, which is very, very exciting to see them develop and grow. And if you're watching this and you're a massage therapist, I would say one of the benefits of being under or supervised or managed by a veteran therapist is, you know, the mentorship opportunities, if that therapist is willing to mentor you, but asking them questions and, and receiving that face-to-face -face guidance mm -hmm. is, is really just, um, it's great. And it's something I wish I had. And it's something that I, I'm happy to do now. And um, it's very rewarding as a veteran therapist pouring into a, a newer generation. There's a lot of little nuances, you're right, that a veteran therapist can teach you. Like when we work at the chains and we work for people that aren't massage therapists, they're like, this is your schedule, go hurry, get the sale. For working for a veteran massage therapist, I've been able to talk to my therapist a little bit more about taking control of the session, slight little psychological things that they can do to make sure that the client knows that that they're in control of the session, that this is what it is that we're going to do, how to talk to the clients, how to make sure that you're acknowledging your client's pain and letting them know what it is that you're feeling and letting them, giving them the permission to receive body work. So there's a lot of things, you know, I, 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 I'm fully into the client experience. I have, you had said something that spoke to me about, I knew it was time to finish massaging when I found myself wishing that I was doing other things. Mm -hmm. And that's really interesting because I'm kind of in that juxtaposition beginning, you know, because there's some clients that I've been working on that I see every single week. And I think to myself, oh my gosh, I don't know how I'm going to leave this relationship. But there's definitely some times that I find myself thinking, I really need to be working on bookkeeping, or I really need to be working on that coaching program, or I really need to be doing this or, you know, managing my people a little bit better. So I, I just, I really like the, the relationships that I've developed with my staff and talking to them and making sure we can talk about anything from how would you work the pack from this angle to, I had a client that said this thing the other day and it kind of rubbed me the wrong way. How should we handle that? Yeah. Or I've had a client that disappeared you know, and we're not a franchise. So we actually do care about that. How do you suppose I should reach out to them in a way that's not weird <laughs> and makes them feel pressured? So we're able to talk about all kinds of things here. It's there's, great. There's a lot of things and it's a personal decision that every every person, despite what, you're, what career you're in, but when you're looking inside of yourself and what I've discovered is a lot of my clients and the beautiful work about our profession is that it is very personal and clients do get attached and you get attached. Um, and I've just been able to, uh, you really communicate and say, these are my goals. And many, many clients are happy. They're like, if this is what you mm -hmm. desire, um, go for it, you know? And I do, I have time to go in and, and train and, you know, I'm, I'm, able to find the time to like invest and and give massages to my staff members and say okay today we're going to work on a rotator cuff this is you need to know what it feels like receiving yeah. it. and mm -hmm. then the light bulb moment happens that's really been a challenge for me if i'm still in the treatment room so um, I always like to say everything is an experiment. Well, not everything, but you know, <laughs> <laughs> some things um, are an experiment. So, you know, you always have the option, you or myself or anybody always has the option of coming back and saying, you know what, I miss it. I miss being yeah. in the treatment room. Um, I want to connect with people again. This is my desire. But being able to, to have that opportunity is wonderful, but clients are so supportive. The right clients, just like the right people mm -hmm. in your life are supportive of your dreams and goals and aspirations, and they will understand and they will be happy for you. Mm -hmm. And, you know, nothing, it doesn't have to be a permanent decision, so. Yeah. No, it's a fluid situation. <laughs> yeah. That's what we have, the, we definitely have the luck in that. Yeah. <laughs> 
Leah, thank you so much. Um, please tell our viewers where people can connect with you if they want to take your life coaching um, because you are certified as a life coach. If they want to you know, visit your location, um, if they are in Kerrville, please let people know how they can reach you. Sure, absolutely. You can go to our Instagram, Essential Escape Massage. We also have a Facebook page as well. Still in the groundwork process of trying to get the coaching program going, but I actually have plenty of massage therapists that I talk to and just kind of guide here and there. So you can catch us at Essential Escape Massage on Instagram or on Facebook or our email actually is eem for Essential Escape Massage 78028 at gmail.com. Okay, awesome. Leah, thank you so much for your time. Thank you. I wish you much, much success, whatever yep. success feels like. You too, you, you too, and your transition. And I look forward to seeing how your business grows and your life coaching program as well. So yep. take care. Oh, thank you so much for your time. Thank you. Bye. I appreciate you, Michelle. Bye-bye.